Howdy folks, Spencer here, and Cryptic has now fully revealed the 12th anniversary Terran bundle. They've revealed the cost and everything. This bundle will be going live on PC on February 17th, 2022. So let's dive in and just go through this right through the blog, how it's laid out. So the new ships are the Lexington, which is the Odyssey, the Cygnus, which is a galaxy, the Adamant, which I had believed to be a Shran, everything leaks-wise pointed towards a Shran, but it actually appears to be a new Defiant, which was a surprise to me, and I, I think a lot of people are going to like, you know, another Defiant in the game. And then the last ship is the Trailblazer, which is the Intrepid or Voyager. In addition, if you buy the entire pack, you're going to get the Mere Strike Wing Escort, which is very popular for the superior area denial starship trade on it, and it's just a very solid ship all around. There are some unique costumes, and I, I'm not much into the costumes, but you know I'll leave a link to the blog if you want to take a look into those further. In addition to buying the entire bundle, there you will get some other bonuses like a T6 ship coupon, some T6X upgrades some starship slots, keys, and ultimate tech upgrades. And here's the big surprise for everyone right now. We thought that this bundle was going to be around 200 US dollars. And without a sale, it'll cost $175. But with the 25% sale that this thing is going to be launching at, which will last until March 3rd, it's going to be 13,125 Zen. In other words, it's going to be about $130. You can get that probably a little bit cheaper with some Zen charge bonuses. So, you know, this is this is very much a good deal. And if you don't want to buy the entire bundle, you'll be able to buy the ships for 3,000 Zen each. Remember, though, that only the four new ships will be available for this 3,000 Zen each. You can there will also be a sale on those. So during this launch period through the 22nd, they will only cost you 2,400 Zen. Uh, but keep in mind, you don't get the Mere Strike Wing Escort unless you buy the entire bundle. So, let's here's the new uniforms. The Inquisitor's uniform. They, they list a bunch of different things that they put in for that. I'm not much a fan of the uh, Space Barbie side of things, so I'll leave that to others to discuss. The Mere Strike Wing Escort, I know Augie has, has already been going over the skin for this, and, you know, as I've said, this ship is extremely popular because the Starship trade on it really helps out certain types of hangar pets, specifically those that have pulse weapons on them, pulse cannons. So, for some pets, some of you may remember the to the rare Toe Douge hangar pets that people were using like a year and a half ago. They were using those with superior area denial, and they were doing a ton of damage. Um, that was nerfed, but SAD is still a very good trait. It, it helps, and it's also going to buff up the new hangar pets that are launching with the Alliance Carrier that you get from the anniversary event. Okay, so the first ship is the Lexington. We knew that this was coming. Like, <laughs> you, you knew that the Near Odyssey was going to be in here. Now, I want to dive into the stats because i that is usually what I focus on is the stats part of the game. Now, keep in mind that none of these ships are legendary. These are just, they're, they're not legendary, but they're also, they have stats a little bit better than your standard sea store ships. So, even on their own, these ships are going to be very good buys, but in the bundle, I'm going to tell you right now, I think this bundle is a is a good deal. So, let's take a look at the bridge officer stations. You've got a Lieutenant Tactical with Intel, a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Commander Engineering with Miracle Worker, and Ensign Science, and a Lieutenant Commander Universal. I really like this bridge officer layout. I'm not a big fan of Miracle Worker. I think the Miracle Worker specialization it doesn't have a ton of useful abilities, but I know most people like it because of the free Universal console slot you get with it. I, I think that this ship is going to perform quite well. It's going to be a very good performing 4-4 cruiser. Um, you know, it, it's got a pretty good turn rate for a cruiser at 8. It's got a hangar bay. 
And, you know, I, I think all around this is going to be a fairly solid ship. I don't think, well, I, I know it's not going to beat the legendary version of the Odyssey because that has command. Uh, but you could definitely do quite a bit with this ship. This this ship will get you through most, you know, any content the game has. This is going to be a very good performing ship. It has a built-in Agony Phaser Lance. So that, that's going to be handy. Um, and the console on it is a multi-directional artillery barrage. So you, you see how it's got this pod at the top of it. This is to fire torpedoes out. So this console will basically be shooting torps at foes in all directions. And you do more damage with the console if you're for, for more foes on each side. So if you are shooting at, if you're launching the torps from it at targets in front of you and to the right, then both sides are doing more damage. And if you are shooting at things on all sides around you, then it's going to really buff the damage of it up. And it will also buff the damage up even further if there are multiple targets on each side. So, uh, the starship trait dimensional modulation while this trait is slotted, activating directed energy modulation or any miracle worker bridge officer, bridge officer ability will grant you an amount of bonus damage that scales with the number of nearby foes within five kilometers. Um, this buff lasts up to 10 seconds and may only be triggered once every 10 seconds. So basically for each foe around you, up to 10 max, it will give you plus 3% bonus all damage with Starship weapons for 10 seconds. So it's got a max of plus 30. And because of the requirement of you having foes around you, while this, this trait does provide a decent damage bonus, I'm not sure how viable this trait is going to be. I don't think this trait's going to be impacting the meta much because of that distance requirement. It'll be good for people that don't have any better traits, that don't have any of the more premium traits, but I don't think this trait's going to be that useful. Okay. You do also unlock the Mirror Universe Shuttlecraft by unlocking the, uh, or by purchasing the Odyssey, so that is a nice secondary benefit if you were just getting this instead of the, the entire pack, because the Mirror Strike Wing Escort would also be unlocking those Mirror Universe Shuttlecraft. Let's move on to the Cygnus, which is the, the galaxy. Uh, so on this, this has a 5-3 weapons layout. So that's going to be really nice there for those of you that like dual beam bank builds. This ship has a Lieutenant Tactical with Command, Lieutenant Tactical, Commander Engineering with Temporal Operative, Lieutenant Science, and Lieutenant Commander Universal. So right off the bat, I can tell you that this ship should be a good performer for those of you that like beam overload. Is it going to be the best beam overload ship? Of course not, but it's going to be a very strong performer. Temporal operative is an extremely strong specialization for those of you that want to do beam overload builds. Uh, temporal operative has an ability in it called recursive shearing and recursive shearing. You mark it on a target and part of the damage you do to that target is given to you as a bonus after the five second period. So if you're using something like beam overload, you do a ton of damage to a single target, you hit recursive with it, and it's gonna take a portion of that damage you dealt and give it to you as, give an additional chunk to you as a bonus from that ability. So that is extremely powerful. And I, you know, I think that this ship is going to be a very good beam overload platform for those of you that like that play style. Uh, she can equip dual cannons, and let's take a look now at the console and trait. So the console on it is to stabilize dimensional rip. Uh, I think that might be a misspelling for rift there, but basically this is sending a rift in front of your ship that is going to banish foes into the Terran universe. The rift will go up to eight kilometers in front of you, and then it will disappear. It will deal phaser damage to targets that are hit by it. You know, this is going to be one of those consoles we're going to have to actually test it and see how much damage it does, but I, I don't have high hopes for this console. And the trait 
Controlled aggression. While this trait is slotted, activating a universal console or temporal operative bridge officer ability grants a bonus to your control expertise skill based on the current amount of exotic particle generator skill. Subsequent activations will refresh this buff's duration. So this gives up to plus 30 control expertise for 20 seconds. This trait is worthless. Okay, let's move on. Next up, we have the Terran Adamant Heavy Raider, which is, I had believed that this was going to be the Shran. Everything was pointing towards it being a Shran, but uh, thankfully that was wrong, and it is a Defiant. So this is a Heavy Raider Defiant, which I am very happy to see. This has a 5-1 weapons layout. For the Bridge Officer seating, we have a Commander Tactical with Intel an Ensign Universal, Lieutenant Universal with Temporal Operative, and two Lieutenant Commander Universal seats. So this is an extremely flexible bridge officer seating as we see with most other Raiders. You're gonna be able to do a lot of different things with this ship. The Intel seating on it isn't the best thing ever, but for energy weapons, this ship is going to perform, perform extremely well. So if you're a fan of the Defiant, you just gotta really good Defiant that you can go get in the C store that is just going to perform extremely well. Now, this, this uh, ship will also come with some Agony quad phaser cannons. I imagine, you know, the, these are just a reskin of the existing quad phaser cannons. They just had, they have the Agony proc and all that. The issue with this that I'm going to tell you is you're not going to be able to run these with the other phaser quad cannons most likely, so it's going to be one or the other. But it is nice that they are giving us these. Um, and it still does have the limitation that they do also drain engine power when firing. So just keep that in mind. But the quad phaser cannons, they look very good, and I imagine these agony ones are also going to look very good. We have an experimental weapon, a new one, the Terran Repeating Warhead Launcher. So we'll have to see how this one performs. The, the, the Warhead Launchers have been mixed performance-wise. Uh, a lot of these experimental weapons, I, I'd love to say that if they're good or not, but we've seen some that have, look like they're going to be really good in the past year or so, and then they launch and then they're just complete trash. So... I'm going to reserve all judgment for this experimental weapon until it's actually in our hands and we can test it against targets because we've been disappointed way too many times with experimental weapons in the past year. Now, this console on this Adamant is one of the most powerful consoles we have gotten in a while. When I saw this on Leaks three weeks ago, I, I was like, there's, I, I'm thinking to myself, either this console is not what I think it is, or it's going to end up getting nerfed. Um, this console looks to be extremely powerful. I don't know how useful it's going to be for most people, but it is the Agony Redistributor. And you know how I talked about recursive shearing on the, the Cygnus before? This is like an area of effect recursive shearing, essentially. So you mark a target and it will last for 15 seconds. Each second, it will see how much damage you did to that target. And it will take 33% of that damage and deal it to up to 20 foes within five kilometers of your target. So that is really, really powerful. This is going to massively help certain types of builds, uh, especially single target ones, because you'll be able to take all that single target damage you're doing and spread it around. There is a requirement that the targets are close to your target uh, or the secondary targets are close to your target. So that is going to limit how many places it can be used in. But I still believe that this console is going to be extremely powerful and it's going to make some things really, really easy. Um, this console has been a must buy for me ever since I saw it a couple weeks ago. And I am, you know, I, I would be buying, looking at this Defiant just for this console in, in my opinion. Now, I don't know how useful it's going to be for everyone. 
but I think this console is going to perform extremely well. Next up, we have the Starship trait off of the Defiant, the Wild Weasel. Weasel. Activating evasive maneuvers or any Intel Bridge Officer ability will call in a Wild Wheels Weasel shuttle to distract nearby enemies. This will cause up to 20 nearby targetable torpedoes and or mines to be drawn towards the mobile decoy, as well as the five nearest enemy vessels being taunted into attacking it. Uh, so basically what this is saying is when you activate evasive maneuvers or intel abilities, it will call in a shuttle that is going to just draw in all the threat from nearby foes, and it's going to make sure any targetable torpedoes or mines chase after it rather than you. So... It's going to be good for survivability. It does have a 45 second lockout. Am I going to use it? Probably not. But, you know, for those of you that need that little bit of survivability, there's something you might want to consider. And the last ship here is the Terran Trailblazer Science Warship. So you can see some skins for it there. On this, we have a 4-3 weapons layout. We have a bridge officer seating with a lieutenant tactical with a miracle worker, lieutenant commander tactical, ensign engineering, commander science with command, and lieutenant commander universal. In addition, this thing has a built-in phaser lance, just like the Odyssey did. But I want to point out something to you people. This ship, this these stats here, this bridge officer seating is very close to the Janeway promotional ship that we got last year. This is actually a better version of the Janeway, in my opinion, because the, the thing with the Janeway was it was a 4-2 weapon layout. The ship did have a cloak, so you are losing the cloak in exchange for this extra aft weapon. But the, the issue is with cloaks is that they bug out too much to be of practical use. You know, you get stuck in a cloak in a run and your run's dead. You get, there's also the issue of most people can't actually benefit from what a cloak offers, which is something I'll talk about in the future. But the, the basic summary is only people in the Romulan faction can actually get the pieces to make cloaking effective in this game, to make the cloak ambush worth it. So this is a better version of the Janeway that we got last year, and it's going to be in the C store for $30 or $24 with the sale that's going on during the launch here. So this, if I had bought the Janeway class last year, a promotional ship, I would be mad because Cryptic just released a C store ship with better stats than a promo ship right there. So... As I said, it's got a built-in phaser lance, just like the Odyssey did. The console on this is the Decentralized Immunity. Let me read here. So, it, it looks like it's basically creating a drone that is going to make you immune to all damage while the drone is active. And if the drone is destroyed... So it's going to, it creates a drone for 10 seconds. And while that drone is out, you are immune to all damage. But if that drone is destroyed, then you lose that immunity. But if it's destroyed early, then you get the partial cooldown, uh, par partial cooldown reduction on the console. This console might be useful for some people. It reminds me of, you know, the Nikul, how they have the, like the clone of themselves that just keeps them alive. You have to kill it in order to kill the Nakul. This is basically the same thing, but in space, but it only lasts 10 seconds. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, the starship trait off of this is weaponized exotic particles. Basically when you hit any firing mode abilities like rapid fire, beam overload, torp spread, whatever, it, you're getting plus 50 EPG skill. So I'm not sure how useful this trait's going to be. Um, maybe someone on an EPG build might find it useful as a budget option, but really not too much to, to go crazy for here. Now, I want to recap everything here. And something I missed too. Um, the Agony Redistributor off of the Adamant provides a passive bonus to Inertia Rating. I'm not aware of 
how many other items do we have in the game that give you inertia? So th this console will probably be popular just for that inertia bonus alone, because that'll help with maneuverability on a bunch of different ships. Okay, recap. All of the ships are pretty much are, are pretty good, and the, each of the ships in this bundle are good in their own way. The bundle is going to cost you $130, basically. It's much cheaper than we were expecting. The bundle comes with a lot of really nice bonuses, including the Mirror Strike Wing Escort, which is a lockbox ship. To be honest, I was expecting this bundle to be of around $200, and Cryptic has just come out and released it at, at a much lower cost than I was expecting. If you have the means to get this bundle, I highly recommend that you get it, because each of the ships is good in their own right. You've got ships that are, they're not legendary, but they're the next best thing. Each of their sh each of these ships in this bundle, I would say, have their own, you know, ha have their own ways to be useful at various types of builds. You know, you've got the Mirror Strike Wing Escort. You know, the trait off of it's good, and it's just a really good like science uh, energy weapon hybrid type ship. It's really good for that. The Odyssey is going to be a good cruiser platform for people that like 4-4 America Worker ships, especially it's got a hangar bay, a built-in lance, and it's got a really nice torpedo console on top of it. The Galaxy class here, for those of you that don't like the Galaxy X with the third nacelle, this is a 5-3 Galaxy that's going to make beam overload builds work extremely well on it because of the temporal operative seating. You've got the a new Defiant that is a heavy raider, so it's going to be extremely powerful for those of you that want to just run around with cannons and just maximize that cannon damage potential. It's going to be extremely potent for that, especially if you can keep the enemy's flank in front of you. You've got the Terran Trailblazer Science Warship, which is, as I said, this is literally a clone of the Janeway promotional ship that they released last year, except it's better. Like, th this bundle is just... I know we're talking about something that costs over $100, but for, for STO, this bundle is a very good deal, and I would highly recommend, if you have the funds to get it, to do so, because it's... Everything in here is good. I, I don't normally say that, but everything in here is actually good. I've been talking for a little bit. I know there's going to be questions and comments, so do feel free to ask below if you have any. I will be doing like full-on ship reviews of each of these ships after the release. Let me know what ship you want me to do first. I'm going to do one review a day, and then I will be following that up with uh, maybe some build and performance videos the following week. So let me know which of these four ships you want me to cover first. Actually, I'll put up a poll up on the YouTube channel, so make sure to go vote in that. But that's going to be it for today. I've been talking for 22 minutes. Uh, I will, you know, go get some stuff ready for this, and uh, I will see you all next time.